Nicholas Hamlin, who there's lightning and thunder out here. Did you hear that? Yeah. Oh, we have a big summer storm here. Well, which means I'm in Florida. You you are in Arizona, but you're on vacation now. Yeah, I mean, uh, we just uh, got back from uh, the uh, Summer Classic at XP in North Carolina. And we had three days off, and then we're back to training again on Thursday. And you had a very good trip to Paraclete. So, Nicholas Hamlin, in, who, who does not know, but I'm going to say it anyway, outside Center for Arizona Airspeed, <laughs> whoever doesn't know that. And they just yeah. competed at Paraclete, uh, the summer meet at Paraclete, and you had a good trip there. Yeah, uh, we had a pretty good meet. Um, <clears throat> I feel like um, we didn't have uh, as good of a meet there as we did at XP as far as uh, uh, how satisfied we are per uh, round. But overall, we had some really good scores. And overall, I'm happy with uh, how good we uh, did on all, all the rounds, really. Um, there's some homework to be done and some training uh, between now and uh, the U.S. Nationals. But uh, yeah, uh, it, was, it was good for us to go there uh, to... Uh, size ourselves up against the rhythm again and yeah it was an overall a very good experience for Arizona Airspeed. That was the new lineup which is really still a very young lineup um, and it went from 30 23.9 at the Shamrock showdown to a 25.8 a few months later. That's quite impressive. Um, explain quickly the competition draw. Was it faster, slower? Was it average compared between Shamrock and, and Parapet? I think it was faster than Shamrock. Shamrock had a lot of slow stuff through the door. Um, even if it was uh, necessarily not all uh, blocks, some of the slower blocks uh, uh, were in the draw at the Shamrock and also some of the slower randoms. But uh, overall, once you got out of the door, um, you know, you had a couple of fast rounds uh, at the Summer Classic, um, you know, but um, also uh, we, uh, we just treated them uh, uh, right and attacked those type of skydives, you know. But some of the other skydives were pretty technical, round one, round two. Uh, round one was uh, also like a, a team slot switcher, just at the Shamrock. <laughs> uh, and, uh, yeah, so it was good. It was a good... Um, it was uh, overall a good draw for us. We just came off of a speed phase. So uh, we, um, we added a little bit of more speed into our flying compared to the Shamrock. So that's some of the uh, bump. Um, and, but we also went into the Summer Classic uh, exhausted from a very busy May, from training and, and coaching and many other things. A lot of us haven't had a day off in, in three weeks, which is a good problem to have. But in the end of the day, we all went to uh, the Summer Classic being very tired, all of us. And that was like the biggest concern, being fresh uh, for enough to do well in the competition. Well, that, however, the, the, the you know, two-point average, um, th that is significant. I mean, the speed training obviously showed some results. And despite exhaustion and busy, uh, two-point two average difference between um, Shamrock and this is similar draw, you know, maybe a little bit faster, but that's a, in fact, 25.8 is, that's on the high side in the whole airspeed history, isn't it? You haven't done much higher with any lineup. Yeah, I mean, the, uh, I, I don't know before 2007, but the 2008 to through 2011 lineup, uh, they had a 26 plus average in uh, Russia at one of the Malevsky Cups, which I think might have been one of the uh, very first 26 plus averages. And then they had that 27.7 average or 27.5 average at the World Championships in the 2010. Um, and then um, uh, the 2011 and 12 lineup had a uh, 26 plus average at the US Nationals and a, a 27.9 at the 2012 World Championships. But a 25.8 is a respectable uh, uh, score, you know. Um, yeah. For us, uh, you know, looking back, there are a couple of uh, three rounds. I think we, we definitely underperformed, and uh, but that's always going to be that case. So uh, you know, uh, when you're in four way and you train all the time, shoulda, coulda, wouldas come up all the time, and we could have done that. We should have done this to get a little bit more out of it. But in the end of the day, we had some really good skydives, and even though the score necessarily doesn't always show it, there are some skydives that were. Really good for us.
uh, you know, that, that um, will uh, come nationals, we will have even higher scores on those type of skydives, like round two, three blockers or, or uh, you know, round uh, eight and nine. So. Yeah, you had one 19 pointer, right? So that has to get out of the way. I, I remember we, I was um, writing more about the 20 plus club, the 21 plus club and all, but uh, now there was one 19 pointer. So this lineup, how was it at Shamrock? Did we, did, you, did we have one below 20 actually at the Shamrock? Let me see, uh, that uh, Shamrock, yeah, Sh Shamrock had one 18 pointer. Yeah, uh, yeah, no, it's uh, the second day, um, even though uh, the uh, round eight on the second day we beat uh, Rhythm by one point, it was still not a good skydive for us. And then the jump after that was also not a good skydive, which uh, Rhythm beat us on that jump. So, uh, you know, when we come down from a skydive, when we're not happy with that skydive, it doesn't matter if we uh, beat the other team or if we get beaten. Uh, we evaluate uh, what the potential of that jump and the performance of that jump based on ourselves so those are really the two skydives that uh, we we walk away uh, not feeling too good about but you know there's always going to be that uh, and then have a rebounded on the last jump uh, rhythm had a great skydive we had a great skydive and uh, it's always nice to finish the competition strong you know and no matter what you know you are almost at the 26 plus average level anyway and that's quite early you still have quite some time to go until nationals at least yeah, I mean, we uh, it's uh, June, right? So we trained December through May. So we've been training for six months only, this lineup, actively. And uh, so uh, personally, uh, this team has done over 600 jumps this year. And uh, by the end of this month, we've done, uh, you know, uh, maybe 675 jumps. And at this, we have July, August, and September left. So uh, it's not a whole lot of changing to be done uh, for either team. It's just stay in the course, whatever uh, plan uh, we have. And uh, we're just going to keep doing what we have been doing because uh, whatever we're doing is working for us. And, uh, yeah, we're just going to uh, keep training and, and get ready for nationals. However, the difference to uh, or the distance to rhythm is decreasing. So far, 12 points was at the Shamrock. Now we're down to nine points or eight points. I think eight points it is. I don't know. I think it's eight points. Um, it, they're getting closer, uh, obviously, as it seems. And uh, any concerns yet? <laughs> no, <laughs> not at all. Uh, rhythm, uh, rhythm doesn't play into our um, uh, strategy or training. Uh, we want to go and do our best. And we know that when we do uh, our best at the Shamrock or at the Summer Classic, when we have good skydives, uh, we, uh, we uh, are ahead. And uh, that's all we know, and that's all we care about. Rhythm, I don't think, performed uh, that well at the Shamrock. I think there were more them at the Classic. Uh, mm -hmm. So um, I feel like at the XP Indoor, uh, there were more them at the, at the uh, Summer Classic uh, that just happened. There were more themselves. Mm -hmm. I don't know what happened at the Shamrock, but I don't think uh, they have grown. I think they underperformed, if you ask me, because uh, they look sharp. They're good. It's going to be a close uh, U.S. Nationals between these two teams. And, uh, you know, that's, uh, that, that, uh, yeah, that battle is what fuels this team uh, as far as uh, keeping us motivated. But in the end of the day, we cannot go into competition wanting to beat rhythm. we got to go into the competition wanting to do the best guy as we possibly can and wanting to win. And if we put together 10 awesome rounds, uh, uh, you know, and, and, and we get beaten, then there's nothing we can do. But uh, I, uh, up to this point, even at the uh, XP Indoor, when we had good skydives, uh, we put up good scores. And that's all we have to worry about. Yep. We'll talk to, hopefully I'll be able to talk to Rhythm too and see how it looks from their perspective. We cannot talk much about, did you see some of the jumps at all of other teams there or we just completely focus on your own bubble? No, I mean, uh, uh, it's, um, we definitely just uh, focus on our own game. But, dude, uh, uh, different people uh, uh, have different strategies. I look at the scores to kind of know what we're doing and how we're doing because uh, we're a growing team. We're still ironing things, still learning the competition, you know. Uh, but part of that process, um, I, as a captain, I had to be looking at the scores and, and uh, 
making sure the team is is uh, working it correctly or making whatever adjustments need to be uh, um, adjusted, you know. And some people decide not to look at scores, and but but still the knowledge is still there because uh, someone on the team uh, is is keeping an eye on the competition. But that's more for our own benefit. It's not to size ourselves up. It's more like this guy that felt good. Does that represent in the scores as far as the standings? Yes or no? Or this guy was not good. Uh, you know, sometimes you tie, and sometimes you didn't do good, and you you get beaten, or sometimes you even pick up a point. So, so that's part of the strategy, keeping an eye on the competition. But uh, you know, in the end of the day, the motivation to do well has to come from within the team, not from any kind of external factors. So next next meet is uh, the nationals for you. Yeah. Let's talk about a little bit, uh, at least um, not about rhythm, because that's kind of the elephant in the room anyway, but let's talk about, um, we, we had two other interesting teams there. One is um, the team that you're coaching, R2G, Ranch Second Generation, right? I mean, coaching as much as you have time to do it. Um, yeah. How they made, they made another step forward, right? Yeah, I mean, it's uh, last year they did maybe 80 jumps and a lot of tunnel <clears throat> and this year uh we decided to put three camps in arizona we tried to get a few more jumps uh they're young so they cannot jump under all conditions so even uh, up at the ranch uh when when uh, you know the licensed skydivers and experienced skydivers keep jumping they're young on the big canopies and you know uh they're great in free fall but maybe a little bit more novice on the canopy and, and uh, have a, a lower tolerance they have to quit jumping so last year was not a good year as far as jump numbers uh, were concerned but this year they're doing really well and uh, you know it's i'm a little bit involved but the biggest credit comes to that team the hunger they have and they're very coachable they listen and and they apply so i have my hand in there a little bit but by far um you know the secret ingredient for their success is uh, that team alone a very talented very driven and uh, uh, very coachable. Not only the ranch, second generation, also a new four-way generation. So that is um, you know, very promising yeah. for, for, for US competition, US forward competition. Um, how about, yeah. there was also the team which may become, might become the, uh, the new um, team in four-way women for, for the USA delegation, US delegation. Phoenix XP. Phoenix, Phoenix XP. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Did you have a chance? Yeah, I mean, we shared the airplane with them when we were there training and competing. And uh, yeah, it looks promising. I mean, uh, they, they're training hard, doing well. I, I heard uh, that they had a little bit of a slow start, you know, which, um, uh, which is fine. I mean, they had uh, their selection process. They're being co coached by Jeanette. So maybe she mm -hmm. could say more about it. But mm -hmm. uh, from my perspective, I thought they were doing uh, pretty good. Some of the scores and some of the videos I saw, it looks really promising, you know. But, um, you know, it's, it's, um, there are no shortcuts. Any team, Rhythm, Airspeed, Second Generation, Phoenix XP, any of those, if you want to become good, you have to put, uh, you know, the miles in, which means the jump numbers, the, yep. the tunnel, the, uh, yeah, you have to put it all in. And, uh, you know, even though Airspeed has only been together for six months, this current lineup, there's a lot of experience mm -hmm. and uh, with that experience uh, comes a little bit of an advantage and we're also you know honed in the airspeed uh, um, uh, project as a whole as far as training strategy and and uh, and traditions and philosophies so we come with a complete package as far as knowing how to train that works for us with the resources we have out here and, uh, you know, all of those we are trying to use to our advantage for this year. No shortcuts. <laughs> no, a, no shortcuts. It's a fun truth and a sad truth at the same time, the fun truth, because the road to where you are is a very fun road, right? So the no shortcut is somehow sobering, but at the same time, it's very motivating because there's a lot of fun on the way. Yeah, I mean, for us, it's uh, when we planned this year, um, it's, uh, we knew we needed to do at least 800 jumps. And, um, and uh, we are uh, right on target to that number, maybe a little bit more. But the more you train, the more important rest is as well. And we just also started to use the tunnel this year differently than maybe we have used it in the past. Uh, just 
just, uh, but that's being customized based on the experience level and what the goal and the path uh, is needed uh, from us. So, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, uh, I, I think our training thus far is uh, putting a great foundation to how we need to perform at nationals, but also uh, hopefully we become the U.S. team and we move on to the World Championships in Australia. This year is essentially uh, a plan for going to uh, the World Meet. But uh, along the way, uh, you know, winning the nationals is also something that uh, the plan had to take into, into consideration. Well, I'm sure that the Europeans are taking a very close look and will be evaluating the scores and the numbers and the videos and everything very carefully um, they, for, for next year's uh, event in Australia. So we'll see what they have to say. Yeah, the rumors have it that uh, Hayabusa is going to come to U.S. nationals. Yeah, uh, but those are just rumors that I'm throwing out there. <laughs> I'm hoping so. I heard about the French team possibly too. So that, that would be wonderful. And if we see them, we have a mini world meet already this year. First the World Cup, then the world mini world meet in, in Paris. We shall see. Hopefully it's going to happen. And uh, we will be excited to, to, to witness that. I'm, I'm going to be there. Jump yeah. in. Yeah. <laughs> <Make sure> we <laughs> Okay, Nicholas, uh, thank you very much for this uh, update shortly after uh, the summer meet at Paraclete. And um, we'll um, we hear, hear more hopefully before we see you in, in Paris in a little while. Thanks a lot. Good luck. Thank you, Kurt. And thank you to the uh, NSL News and uh, everyone else. We appreciate your support. See you soon.